gospel to the poor. Yes. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Be seated. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. To the candidates, I'm just going to talk to you directly. Amen. I want to encourage your heart. Um, let me give you a little bit of background of myself. I've been in ministry uh, since I was about 30 years old. I'm 38 now. Um, the Lord called me out in a, a dramatic way. Amen. I wasn't born in church. Amen. I didn't grow up in church. I don't know church like church like that. Come on. Amen. I, God literally called me. God literally yeah. appointed me. God literally adorned, uh, ordained me to preach his gospel. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not something that I take lightly, nor is it something that I do because I desire to get an applause or glory. Come Amen. On. I am a person, I don't like talking in front of people. I don't enjoy it. I still get nervous even as I sit in my seat. Even when I, had, I knew I had to read the scripture, I was just as nervous as day one when God first called me. But I tell you what, there's something about having the spirit of God on the inside. Of you. There's something about being called by God. There's something about this thing called the grace of God, the, the, the anointing of God. that it, it enables you and it causes you to go forth and do what God has called you to do. In spite of what you don't like doing, in spite of what makes you uncomfortable. But it is the spirit of God on the inside of you. I'm telling you, this thing, this entity, it's not a, a ritualistic, religious type thing. I'm talking about God. God is very real. And God is a spirit. And God, he is not a religious organization. He is not a man-made concept. He's not this thing that we come up with and we do on Sunday. But I'm telling you, God is so very real. God is real. Listen, God, 
is just as real as he is in Isaiah chapter 61. Thousands of years ago, when the spirit of the Lord was upon Isaiah to yes, preach sir. his word, yes. that is the same spirit that was upon Jesus. Right. And it's the same spirit that's going to be upon you, that is upon you to go forth and to preach his word yes, and to sir. do whatever God has called you to do in the future. Amen? Amen. So I, 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 I'm not a person that loves to talk in front of people. Um, absolutely do this by the spirit of God and by the anointing of God. I rely upon God completely and totally. God told, told me when he first called me out, he gave me a scripture, Joshua 1 and 9. Haven't I commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid of the snake, but you're, the Lord your God, he'll be with you wherever you go. And so wherever I went, I remember that God is with me. When I stood up in a pulpit, I remember that God is with me. When I was in a hospital praying for folks, I remember God is with me. See, yeah. a lot of people, they go on the arm of the flesh, and they go because they got a collar on their neck, or they go because somebody else called them, or somebody else told them to go, but I'm telling you, me, I guess it for nobody else in this room of God has called me to preach this gospel. Because God has called me to preach this gospel. I can preach it in a way that pleases Him, and I can preach it in a way that's effective. Because I got the Holy Ghost. I got the grace of God upon my life. I have the anointing of God. And let me tell you something. When you got the Spirit of God upon you and in you and flowing through you, you are effective. You don't have to try to work. You just work. Yes. <laughs> I wish I had somebody in here who yeah. knows the Spirit of God. And see, I, I went through 25 years of my life not knowing why I was born, not knowing why God placed me here. But there was a day when God called me out. See, the, the scripture says you can't even come to God unless he draws you by his spirit. And that same spirit that drew me now lives on the inside of me. And that same spirit that's on the inside of me will draw others to him. Amen? And so as you go out and you go to preach his word, and you go into hospitals to pray for the sick, or you uh, have to get woken up in the middle of the night and pray for somebody else, I'm telling you right now, your confidence had better be in the Holy Ghost. And you better not be in your flesh. Better not be in your head knowledge and the very things that you think you ought to say. You know how it is when somebody calls and pray, oh Lord, what should I say? Let me get my Bible, let me do this. No, 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 you have to prepare yourself. We're not preparing a message, we're preparing the messenger. You better have something on the inside of you that when you're called upon, you can get up and release the word of God with assurance, with confidence, with faith that, hey, I've got the spirit of God on the inside of me. And I can speak to these people. I can pray for this person. I can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I can even speak to the dead and they shall be raised. Okay. Listen, y'all. God created us to be dependent upon him. That's why outside of God, when you're not saved, that there's folks in here that ain't saved, that's why you don't function well. Mm -hmm. You don't function well because God never created you to function without Him. He wants you to be dependent upon Him. God, God doesn't believe in an independent woman or an independent man. God believes in a man that's dependent upon Him and dependent upon His kingdom. Yes, yes, sir. Even Jesus Himself. Did you read anywhere in Scripture where He did anything without the Spirit? It wasn't until he went down to the river Jordan, the spirit of God walked and came down upon him like a dove. The Bible says he walked in the full measure of the spirit of God. And he went about doing good and healing all the more oppressed of the devil. And he broke and he came to destroy the works of the devil. How did he do it? By the spirit of God. Yes. And, and, and I encourage you all today, if there be one thing that you do after today, one thing that you set your heart upon and to do is to get to know the Holy Ghost. Yes. See, we got the old covenant. Where the Father is talking. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. 
Then we got the new covenant, the son comes in. So the father sends the son. The son comes in and says, I'm saving you by my grace. And he says, I'm going away, but when I go away, I'm going to send another. Yes. And so now the son, he sends the comfort. Right. And the comfort, he's only going to speak that which the son has already said. And the son is the word, and, the God, and that, that's what the, uh, the father spoke in the old covenant. Yes. So this, the three, all the Godhead working together. Yes. But now we're in the dispensation of grace. We're in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And he ought to be your best friend. Yes. He's a, he, listen, it is the person of the Holy Ghost. The yes. Holy Spirit, he, he, he's not the Bible. Some folks say, oh, the Spirit, oh, that's the Bible. God didn't send the Bible from heaven and it fell on folks on the day of Pentecost. He sent His Spirit. The Holy Ghost, He is a person. Amen. Do not quench Him. This is one thing that God, from the very day I started in ministry, God called me. I said, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this by your Spirit. And I'm just going to trust that what your Word says about your Spirit is true. I say, I don't, I don't fake and I don't play. That's and I don't get up in nobody's house and play like I'm a That's preacher right. and play like I got an anointing and try to be all charismatic and, I, and all these things. Who I am is just who I am. And it's, yes. the, it's the spirit of God working upon the sun. Yes. Don't do it without the Holy Ghost. Don't go into the hospital without the Holy Ghost. Don't go pray for nobody without the Holy Ghost. Don't go hand, lay hands on no, no demonic possessed person without the Holy Ghost. It is he that does the work. Even Jesus said, the things that I see my father do, I do. He works, so I work. Me crazy. You better know the spirit of the living God. You better know the person of the Holy Ghost. It is by him that you're going to be able to be effective in ministry. It is by him that you're going to be able to get up here and preach a word that's relevant to the people. That I can touch somebody's heart. That I can open up my mouth and I can prophesy to somebody. And I can meet them right where they're at in that hour. Right where what they need. I don't have to tell them that they're going to have a nice house and four bedrooms and a pool and all this stuff. No, I can tell them, hey, guess what? I know exactly where you're at. Here's what the Lord says and I can prophesy over their life. I can speak a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. I can I can even discern uh, spirits by way of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. It's by way of the Holy Ghost. And man, if you got the Holy Ghost, it makes it so easy. Yes. Yeah. He makes me look so good. Yeah. The Holy Ghost, man, he makes me look like I'm yeah. so smart. It's not the glasses, y'all. <laughs> I can't see you now. <laughs> but it's because of the Holy Ghost. I look intelligent. Yeah. He makes me look good. Because I trust him. Yes. Do I trust him 100% all the time? Lord. Mm, not always. Uh, but thank God for grace. Yes. God is working on me. I don't know about y'all. Yes. And so as you get ordained tonight, and uh, they lay hands on you tonight, yes. and they push you out, yes. it's time to fly. Oh, yes. It's time to flap your wings yes. and fly. Yes. And there's going to be times when you're going to be on your own. There's going to be times where God is going to bring people into your life. And they're going to say, I need you to pray for me. And man, you pray for the Spirit of God. Yes. I encourage you, get to know this Holy Ghost. Yes. Get to know the Spirit of God. Yes. Don't get caught up in religious type activities. Don't get up in the same ritualistic kind of prayers. Yes. Don't, don't, be, don't do church sayings Come on, Come on. that you don't even understand. Come on. Don't, don't, don't fall for that. I mean, just flow with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, one thing God's taught me, just, just trust me. Yes. I've done so many weird and crazy things by way of the Spirit of God. Y'all just If I told you half the stories that I've been through and I've done, I'm telling you, it got to be the Spirit of God because yes. I would not have known otherwise. Yes, yes, yes. And the Holy Ghost make you look so good. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Jesus himself didn't do one miracle, work one sign without the Holy Ghost, yes. without the Spirit of God. He, 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 he just did it. And now you got the Holy Spirit for two things, really, to bring forth fruit. And you're going to bring forth fruit in your life. You're going to walk in gentleness, meekness, love, faith, yes. temperance. Yes. You're going to walk in real love. A love that surpasses all understanding, yes. an agape yes. kind of love. Yes. That's what's going to really cause your ministry to thrive. That, yes. hey, I'm, I am pushed and I'm motivated by love. Love for God first and then for his children. Yeah. Love for God first and then for his Come children. On, yeah. Get me on this. Just get, get this right. Love for God first. Yeah. I understand that God loves me unconditionally. Yeah. God, he poured out his spirit upon me just for, just because I put my faith in him. That God loves me that much in spite of my sins, in spite of my weakness, in spite of my infirmities, in spite of all my lack. God loves me anyway, and I receive his love. And when I receive his love, I'm able to go out in faith. The Bible says faith working by love. Faith 
becomes effect, uh, faith becomes effective. Yes. Operational through love. Yes, yes. Love for God, love for God's people. Come on, Check your motivation. Yes. Check, hey, why am I doing this? I can remember so many times I'll be in, in, in teaching Bible study or I'll be preaching and I'll say, Sonny, why are you doing this? Yes. Sonny, why are you speaking that? Yes. Sonny, why, is, is that the Spirit of God or is that you talking? Because yes. if I'm talking, I'm not affected. If I'm not talking, I'm not hitting you right where you're at. If I'm talking, I'm not meeting nobody in this building right where they're at. Because I'm just saying something that sounds good to my ears. Yes. But I want to be great in the heartbeat of God. Yes. And the only way to do that is with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Is with the Holy Spirit. Yes. To have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. To be able to pray in other tongues. If you don't, I, I encourage you. What tongues is for today? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's one of the gifts of the Spirit. Speaking in tongues, interpretation thereof, prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. The reason why folks don't operate in these things and folks don't, don't, they don't flow in these things, they just don't believe it. You can't operate in something you don't believe. And so we read the Word of God, we read the Bible as it is and for what it is, and we believe the Word of God. If God says you can pray in other tongues, may pray in other tongues. If God says you can prophesy, believe that you can prophesy. When God says go and lay hands on somebody and speak a word of love, Lord, I don't know what to speak. Just give me one word. Give, he'll give you one word and just speak that word and the rest will flow. That's right. The Bible says, out of you will flow rivers of living water. You have to get out there and speak. You got to go out there and do. You got to get out there and trust God. You gotta, whatever God, by the unction of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, you have an unction from the Holy One and you all, you know all things. You don't have to go around wandering in this life and, and being in ministry, not knowing what's going on, not knowing how to flow, not knowing how to function. You can know all things. And you can be complete in Him. And you can get out there and you can have wisdom that surpasses worldly kind of wisdom. Yeah. I'm talking about the Spirit of God being on the inside. That real wisdom, that godly wisdom that will teach you how to flow, will teach you how to function, will teach you how to deal with folks. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, y'all don't even know me. Y'all don't know real me. If you knew me, you say, how is this boy standing up there preaching God's word? I'm telling you that. Some of these folks in my family, Uncle, Uncle Mike, Uncle Tom, Uncle Donald, they, they know me. Yeah. Boy, they know, they know God's real. Yeah. I'm a, I am a walking testimony and an epistle that God is real. And I know that God is real, but the Holy Ghost is still active and functioning in the body of Christ. Yeah. God's yeah. not dead. My God, yeah. my God, I'm my God ain't dead. No, he's not. Hallelujah. Well, we got a bunch of dead churches. Yeah. Ain't nobody flowing with the Holy Ghost. That's too weird. What are they doing? They don't take all that. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Demons are real. Demonic forces are real. Persecution will come, y'all. You being ordained tonight, you better believe. Wake up tomorrow, be ready. They put your armor on. And the armor of God, all the armor is all of God. Helmet of salvation. Breastplate of righteousness. It is all of the shield of faith. Shield of truth. It's all of God. Shield of faith. Sword of the spirit. Everything's of God. Don't you fight the devil with up with your arm and flesh. You fight it by the Holy Ghost. You fight it by the word of God. You fight the demonic forces, the oppression, the persecution that will come. Jesus promised it. Jesus prayed for you, though, in John chapter 17. Yes, that's right. Father, keep them. Yes. I don't pray that you take them out of this world, but yes. while they're in there, keep them from the that's evil right. one. Yes. <laughs> yes. Man, you got the Lord of Lords yes. pray for you. Yes. Hey, the King of Kings, the King of Glory, the one that created heaven and earth. Listen, I'm talking about God. Yes. Now, wake up. I'm talking about God. Yes. I'm talking about that. Listen, sometimes we just talk about God. He's just. It's just some mystical thing out there. This is some, some man-made idea. Just, just, no, I'm talking about the creator of the universe. Of heaven and earth. The one who always was. The one that's outside of time. The one that's everlasting. The one that's the beginning and the end. The Alpha and Omega. I'm talking about him. And he pours out his spirit in you. Yes. Me, preacher? Yes. Yeah, you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's crazy. God, listen, God's not using you so long. Man. If you were just on this day and going forward, just know that God's with you. And God's with you. 
Forget my boys and my girls and my parents and my friends and my bank account. God. This is God that is with me. The one that owns a cow on a thousand pigs. That God. The one who knows all things. The one that can reveal even things yet to come. Nothing catches God by surprise. Listen, you know, I said this once, I was preaching, you got the hook up, y'all. I mean, it's for real, you got the, you can know God. What a privilege. Hey, y'all, y'all, y'all wake up there? What a privilege it is to know, tell me about God. He's on your side. God is for you. The same one in the old company when, when they were surrounded and he opened up their eyes and there was chariots, flames of fire, angels, angelic hosts. He's with you. The Lord of angel armies. It's not just a fairy tale. It's for real. He's with you. He's for you. He's the one that's favoring you. Man, if you can get to the realization of that, if you can get the revelation of that, that God is with me. That wherever I go, then God, I'm taking God with me. Yeah. That's why I can go into the other most parts of the earth and I can preach the gospel. And I can preach it without fear or intimidation of man or any kind of demonic force because I'm like, God. Yes. And God. God is with me. Yes. I don't care about no money. No. Your weapons. Come on. Armies. God. 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 God is with me. God yes. is with you. Yes. And when you go out there, you go, Back up straight, head high. Yeah. Y'all don't know who y'all messing with. God is with me. <laughs> Satan, you coming against me? Jesus has already defeated you. Come on, already. You're my footstool. Yes. I tread upon you. Yes. And when you say that, you gotta say it, and you gotta know it. So you can say, you can say any old thing. But when you know it, man, God, God is working. He's the one that do that does the work. It is God, the Spirit of God on the inside of you. You don't have to fear a single thing. When you get up here and preach, you don't have to be worried or concerned about what I'm going to say. You invest in time of prayer, reading and meditation upon the Word of God. And when you get up here and preach, it'll come out. As a man think of in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. What do you have in abundance? So yeah, you're going to have to sacrifice. Yes. Yeah, you're going to have to turn TV off. You're going to stop listening to that garbage music. You're going to have to stop all this, the, the, the dirt and the garbage of this world. Yeah, you're going to the sewage of this world. Yeah, you're going to have to separate yourself. Yeah, you're going to have to be holy. Yeah, you're going to have to be separate. Yeah, absolutely. But guess what? Then the holy thing is the word of God becomes an abundance in your heart. See, the things of this world becomes low, and then you got an abundance of God, and the only thing you ever know is God. Like, I, I would love to teach y'all and talk about the world, but I can't, because the abundance of my heart is Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the world and Beyonce and all whoever is popular now, but I'm sorry, Jesus comes out when I don't talk. <laughs> See, it ain't hard. You don't have to worry about cussing in the pulpit. You don't have to be afraid of, I'm not going to say the whole thing. God, I, 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 might, I might say the wrong thing. I might mess up. I might cuss. No, you ain't. Out of the abundance. Yeah. Just open up your mouth and talk. And faith. By faith. Yeah. And faith. With the Spirit of God. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. God's with you. Yeah. The true and living God. Yeah. The true the living God. Yes. He's with you. Yes. He's favoring you. Uh -huh. His hand is on you. Yes. Whatever you put your hand to, it'll begin to prosper. Hmm. Why? Because God's with you. God. When you speak a word, it'll come to pass. Why? Because God's with you. Because yeah. God's working for you. Yes. He's the guy behind the scenes. <laughs> He's the man behind the scenes. You know, we talk about we got the hookup. Like I, I, I like shoes, right? I like to get Jordans. I used to. I don't buy them a lot now because I wear a lot of suits now. So now I got Magnani's and Mezzalon and Italian shoes. But when the Jordans used to come out, I used to have somebody who used to give me the hookup. You know what I'm talking about? Used to come out early. You had to wait in line with a ticket and all that stuff just to get these stupid shoes. I used to do that, and I thought, man, I was special. 
I got the hookup, man. Like, I, I can get these J's and can't nobody else get them. And you know God. Huh? <laughs> you know God. And nothing can get you by surprise. And God's going to prosper you. God's going to use you mightily. You're going to be successful. Things will come against you, but it won't prosper. Every time that rise up against your judgment, you're going to condemn it. And you're going, to come, you're going to come out victorious. You're going to come out on top. He always causes me to triumph. Man, my confidence in God. Man, I ain't scared of no devil. I ain't worried about no devil, what he got to do, what he got to say. He always causes me to triumph. It's like watching a superhero movie. You can get scared through the middle. Think he's going to lose. But you know, everybody not going to know. Spider-Man's going to win this. <laughs> You're a superhero. The plot is written for you to win. Yeah. That's why it says Jesus, He is the author and the finisher of my faith. So no matter what shortcoming you have, no matter what brokenness you deal with, no matter what sin and infirmity you deal with, He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He'll walk you through it. He'll see you through it. He'll give you the grace to go through it. He'll give you the mercy to go through it. Why is that? Mm. Yeah. For his glory. Amen. And that you can testify. That you, you can testify. And you can be that walking letter. You can be that walking epistle. That hey, God is real. That God works in me. That God lives in me. And that God is for me. Here's who I was. But in Christ, check out this new preacher. I look good in Christ. And so he is. Amen. God bless you.